simply lakhs of crores worth of public property owned by the people of this country was transferred to private hands for virtually nothing which led to a drastic increase in the scale of corruption it just jumped several fold sometimes maybe even a hundred fold because the value of the resources which were now being given away was far far more actually joseph stiglitz the nobel laureate in economics who was also the chief economic advisor to the us president has written a book called globalization and its discontents in which there is a chapter called who lost russia in which he tries to understand why is it that after russia embarked upon this kind of economic liberalization that we also embarked upon in the 1990s russia also embarked upon it around the same time why is it that suddenly corruption in russia increased it was thought that it would decrease but in fact it increased with the result that the whole economy of russia collapsed and russia became virtually a failed state so he tries to analyze this and he says that this happened because of large scale and rapid privatization of public resources he says that process increased the demand for corruption many fold because here were huge assets worth tens of lakhs of crores being suddenly given from the public sector to the private sector and that therefore increased the race to get these very valuable assets and thereby to bribe their way into getting hold of these valuable assets so if you have policies of this kind where you allow public assets worth <coughs> huge sums of money to be given away to private people for nothing that increases the demand for corruption <coughs> uh, then there is the supply side of corruption if you have a robust law enforcement machinery which will ensure that anybody who indulges in corruption any public servant any corporate who indulges in corruption that he will get caught and he will be punished that then chokes off the supply of corruption so that is why this whole jan lokpal movement was to deal with the supply side of corruption why because today the enforcement machinery that exists in this country to deal with corruption to catch hold of corrupt people is the police the cbi the cvc and the judiciary these are essentially to some extent the cag cag is also important because it audits and that audit sometimes exposes corruption that takes place as it did in the 2g case or the coal scam case so these are the important institutions but ultimately the most important institutions are the police the cbi and the judiciary because they are charged with the duty of investigating and thereafter punishing the people who are involved in corruption now the problem was that the police is controlled by the state governments the cbi is controlled by the central government and experience showed that the governments were not interested obviously because they were the persons who were indulging in corruption and therefore they were not interested in the police or the cbi investigating their acts of corruption and therefore it was felt that unless we have some independent investigative authority to investigate cases of corruption and to prosecute the corrupt <coughs> you will not be able to deal with corruption the jan lokpal movement was to form this independent to ensure that this independent investigative authority is created which would be totally independent of the government the problem with the cbi actually <coughs> 
This problem confronted the Supreme Court in one of the PILs that we had filed, which was on the Hawala, in the Hawala case, where certain diaries of some Hawala dealers were found by the CBI, which showed payments to various politicians, but they were not investigating those payments. And uh, when, the when this matter reached the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said, 